you folks, Adam Dupay here, and today we're going to be looking at the Ponable.kr level unlink. So I'm super stoked. This is the last of the toddler battle challenges, and this is a live walkthrough, so I haven't, or a live uh, hacking, so I haven't seen this challenge at all. So it's uh, always got to read the hint, Daddy, how can I exploit unlink corruption? So when we go in here and we go to the thing, we can see that there's an unlink binary that set UID on the group of unlink underscore pwn, which is how we can get the flag. So again, as always, we can't just cat out the flag. Um, but the other interesting thing here is we do have the C file. So we'll be able to see the C code to this, which will make our jobs a little bit easier. Um, other interesting thing is there's an intended solution.txt here, so there must be multiple ways to break this, and so the authors uh, felt like they had to put the actual intended solution here so that people could understand it. So I have copied everything locally, and let's get, not what I wanted, started. All right, new frame. So we're going to open up the binary in our classic hopper. Portable.kr, unlink, unlink. All right, so it's going to analyze that. And then at the same time, I'm going to open up in here um, Link. Okay, so you know, since we have the C file, we might as well look through the C code. Like, why waste our time looking at the um, disassembler? Okay, ah, this is what I thought. So, based on the um, name here, unlink, the idea is this is probably going to be a heap style vulnerability. So, here we have um, the inclusions, we have a tag object. Um, interesting. Oh, okay. So it's actually not using heat operations. It is, um, oh, interesting. Okay. So there's already a target function that is put in here, the shell of system bin sh. So here's basically where we'll eventually want to get to. Um, so what they've done here, the idea here is they're recreating uh, rather than using malloc. So you'll get this unlink corruption if you have a double free, um, vulnerability in your program. And so what they're doing here is they're creating that by creating this unlink function, which is one of the main ways um, that you could do a heap overflow, uh, exploit a heap overflow vulnerability. Um, the idea is uh, the heap is basically a series of uh, a linked list of various um, chunks of memory. So you can see they've created this structure called the tag object, which has a forward pointer to the pointer um, in front of it and a back pointer to the pointer behind it and then a character buffer of eight characters. So here we can see that unlink takes in a P and basically gets, so sets the back to be P colon back, gets the front pointer to P, uh, sorry, not colon arrow file descriptor. So dereference that and access the file descriptor and then sets the back equal to bk and sets bkfd equal to fd. So the idea here is that we can actually, um, so here we're mallocking first 120, uh, 1024, and then we malloc a, b, and c. So these will be uh, malloced on the heap. And the idea is these will be a linked list from a to b to c where we have, yeah. So we have A's forward pointer points to B, B's back pointer points to A, B's forward pointer points to C, and C's back pointer points to B. And this is nice, it's actually telling us um, an address on the stack and a heap leak so that that way uh, it can tell us where these things are being ex uh, allocated at. And then now that we have that, basically with this gets command, so when we look at the uh, man page here, uh, gets is one of those, um, functions that is always vulnerable. Uh, Any time you see a use of a gets, this means that you can overflow. Uh, as long as you can control that character pointer that's passed in there, or that um, 
not even that's passed in there because the idea is you're reading from standard in until you get to either a new line or end of file. And so the idea here is there's no check for buffer overrun, uh, which it's saying see bugs below, which is terrible. It should be don't ever use this function. Oh, and which we can see here in the description of never use this function. Um, the idea is this is inherently unsafe because you cannot specify how many characters you want. So any use of gets is unsafe. So we can read into A, and then we're going to unlink B, which will then, uh, and we're gonna read into A buff. So we're actually, even though you can see object pointer A, B, and C are all malloc from the stack, um, these will point to values located into the heap. Uh, and so when we will be getting into A buffer, so we'll be able to overflow that buffer um, and then we'll pass that to the unlink function here of B, which means we need to control exactly um, this unlink buffer. Um, so now the question is, how is this thing compiled? Because we wanna see, so we have our run file on unlink. We can see it's a set group ID elf 32 bit uh, executable. It's dynamically linked. Um, which is not great because when we run this exploit against our version of libc and our um, Ubuntu 16.04, it may be slightly different. But we can run unlink here and we can see that it's giving us a stack address and a heap address and basically telling us, hey, now that you have that, get a shell. So let's just say hello. And so it should execute just fine. And now if we say hello, uh, so how much is it allocking? It's mallocking a size of the object. So this object is going to be four, four, and then eight. Um, so let's just put a bunch of hellos in here. So now we get a seg fault and we should be seg faulting. Uh, well, let's run, open up GDB. Um, so let's try to first before we do that do read elf on this binary um is it s or is it lowercase a to do all i can never remember all these there we go lowercase a to give me everything um and of course i want to pipe that through less so we can see a little bit more about this it's um so it's got a you know global offset table. It's got a text segment. Um, the other thing, okay, yeah. So we can see printf gets malloc puts system. These are all inside the um, GOT table. Um, let's see, I'm really just scanning through here, seeing if there's anything mildly interesting. Um, we can see our shell function. So this actually, I mean, we know this is going to be at a fixed location, so that's what we'll want to try to um, change our offset to. So um, <clears throat> we have a couple of uh, really fun opportunities here. So uh, let's GDB this guy. And I'm going to run check sec on it just to be. So check sec is going to tell me that there's no canary. Yes, the stack, it's a non-executable stack, which is nice. Um, it's not position independent and it's partial relocation. So, and no stack canaries. So if I run this and then I now am going to copy over a bunch of my hellos that I have. Now we've got a seg fault and we can see where are we seg faulting at. So we're seg faulting. So it's saying that it's got a seg fault because uh, EAX plus four. So, um, so info registers EAX. So EAX is six F six C six C six five, which is probably some version of hello. And it's trying to change that. So um, what it's doing unlink. Okay, so what it's doing here is it's going to be um, this line, I believe, at setting the back pointer. 
So let's see, where are we? Um, VIP, let's look at the stack. Okay, so we're at this place. So we're right before the end, moving that D reference, moving it into EDX. And so let's see, what are we trying to do here? All right. Okay, so we have our unlink function here, and it's actually very short. We can see that, uh, look at that with the C code but here of the unlink function. So we'll walk through this and just briefly go over which ones map where. So here we have uh, push EBP. So this is all um, prolog of the function. Then we're moving EBP plus um, underscore underscore name into EAX and then moving EAX plus four, dereferencing that into EAX. So EBP plus name, this must be the parameter P. So this is getting P um, and P plus four is going to be P back because back is at four offset of in this struct. Um, so it's moving that into EAX and then it's moving EAX onto the stack and local variable. So this is the BK variable. And then getting, it's called name, but we'll call it P because that's what the function originally has. And then it's taking P plus e, uh, dereferencing it and then dereferencing it again. So that's getting this file descriptor of this struct and it's moving that here. So this is gonna be FD and then it's moving EBP plus FD into EAX. So it's um, dereferencing it and then moving EBP. So is this the one that we, so here we have unlink. So this is EDX, um, actually I have the addresses here, 48521. 48521. So this is where it ends up crashing. So mark this. Leave a comment. Great. So then we're taking EAX. So we got to look back at what we're doing. So we've done these two lines. We're dereferencing P, uh, getting the back element, storing it in a local variable, dereferencing P again, getting the forward element, storing it there. And then we're assigning FD arrow back equals to BK. So we're writing whatever is inside P back into wherever FD is looking into. So this is going to be FD EBP into EAX. So get the file descriptor, move it into EAX get the pointer that BK points to, put in the EDX, and now dereference EAX plus four, move EDX, what was in BK, so the back of P, and move it into um, ED. So actually, maybe it'll help to draw a little diagram very quickly of what's going on. So if we draw what's going on here, we have to remember at each of these, so I don't have my notepad, so I'm drawing with my awesome mouse. Um, so we basically have these three objects and each of them, the first four bytes is going to be a forward pointer and the next four bytes is going to be the back pointer and forward, back, and then buffer. So this is same thing, forward, back, buff, forward, back, buff. And it really helps to draw these things out to understand what's going on. So A's forward is going to be B. So A forward is a pointer here. Um, A doesn't have a back, so there's no back. And then B's back pointer points, sorry, this is the forward pointer. So B's back pointer points to A, which is gonna point here. And the forward, and B's forward pointer points to C and then C's back pointer points to B. So this is your standard um, your standard uh, linked list here. So if you don't know doubly linked lists, you should go study them. They're very basic uh, data structure in programming, especially in C and C++. So 
the idea here is we're freeing B. We're gonna unlink B, which means we need to remove it from this linked list by fixing up the forward pointer of B's previous and the um, previous pointer for B's next. So the idea is we want, so we want the final diagram to look like this. And this is just going through what's the basic um, underlying logic behind this unlink function. So it's not just like this random black box that you're looking at. So eventually we want, um, we're gonna have A's forward pointer be C and we want C's back pointer to be A. So that way there's no more reference to B, B is essentially gone. And so we can see that the way that this happens in the code here is we have, we create a local variable, we store this, so in this case, the B block is P, so we get P's back pointer and store that as back. We get P's forward pointer, store that as forward, and then we set the forward's back pointer to be back. So that's making changing this value here to be this arrow back to A, and then the back pointer's forward to be where we point to. So this changes their pointer to point to here. Okay, so this is what normally happens. And when we think about in our diagram here, where are we actually going to get to write? So we get to overwrite here at A's buffer. And as we'll look at when we look at these variables on the stack is this will overwrite this buffer, but it will also let us overwrite um, this other metadata inside B. So now once we can control the values here, we can control what gets written where. And this allows us to then overwrite a um, any four bytes in the program of our choosing because we'll get to overwrite them with whatever's in here by using these um, these pointers here. So um, essentially that's what's gonna happen. So then let's look at, we'll use our handy dandy. I'm slightly worried that using our local version of GDB will be different than what they're running on their version. So we can maybe do some uh, sanity checks, but what we can do is um, we can break on main, we can restart, uh, we can call our, uh, we know we're doing three mallocs. And now if I print out the stack uh, 20x slash sign ESP, oh, x20x. Thought I did that right, okay. There we go, okay. So now we have, uh, we should have on our stack, I guess we can figure out where exactly that is because uh, we haven't looked at main yet. So we're mallocking, doing all this fun mallocking and we're moving it at EBP. So let's do um, EBP minus hex 20 or let's see, C, this is, uh, so it's calling malloc first with that's that first one of 1024. This is one malloc. Um, and then two mallocs, three mallocs. Interesting. EBP minus, okay, minus 10 EBP. Yeah, minus 10, minus C, minus 14. Let's see. Uh, so these should be, and then what is it printing out to us? It's printing out the stack address is the address of A and the heap address is what's in A. Okay, so I guess I can wait until I see that. Or I can break on unlink and continue. Oh, uh, test. Okay, so then this actually tells me interesting information because it's saying that, make this bigger. Um, so it's saying that at that memory location that I had, I need to get better at figuring out how to scroll in these things. Okay. <coughs> 
the stack address is this and the heap address is at 804. So I'm gonna keep this here in my scratch buffer just to see that. I really just want to go here. Okay, great. So then I can put that with uh, what I'm looking at here. So I know that at, um, if, I don't know why that's doing that, but there we go. All right, so now that I know that I want to FFFF D1 F4, uh, D1 F4, so here is A, B, C on the stack. Um, awesome, A, B, and C. So then we can see that they're at, so let's A, uh, B, and C. And we should be able to notice that they are all at different areas of the stack. So let's check this out. Okay, cool. So what we wanna know is basically uh, this. I wanna know what's the delta between that and So of course it's a negative number, which is impossible to use complement one. That's useless. All right. Of course you have to get your signed arithmetic correct, which as everyone knows is super easy. Okay. So those are 30, but obviously um, the order is a little weird. So let's do, yeah, okay. So this is A. And the difference between A and B is going to be I think I already know the answer. Okay, 18, which is 24, yeah. Okay, so 24. So the question, and then it should be 24 bytes between this and 40. So let's check that. This minus this fun guy here. Ah, of course. Um, man, it's always been my weak side. All right, another 24 bytes. Good, this makes sense. Okay, the question is, why is it 24 bytes? Because we look at the C code and we can see that uh, unlink.c, we can see that if we ask the compiler what's the size of a tag object, they would say, well, it's eight bytes for this and a pointer to a pointer is four bytes and four bytes, so we'd have four plus four plus eight, which is gonna give us 16 bytes. But, so when we ask these malloc commands, and we can actually see that in the code here, we can say we call malloc and we are pushing hex 10, which is 16. So we're telling the libc that we want to malloc 16 bytes, but it's actually giving us pointers that are 24 bytes apart. And the reason is, because of how malloc works and because malloc itself actually needs to keep track of these forward and backwards pointers um, as probably I'm sure as this continues we'll dig into the heap and all the stuff that's happening on there uh, but for now all that we need to know is that there's 24 bytes there so we can um, should be able to check how exactly how many bytes we need to calculate this offset so we basically, we know right now that, uh, we know the distance between this pointer and this pointer between A and B is 24 bytes. And so we know we get to start writing in here, which is eight bytes. So we have eight bytes. Um, so we know we have a total, so we know we're four, four, so we're eight bytes into it. So uh, we basically need 28, four minus eight, so 16 bytes. So 16 bytes, so eight bytes should get us to the end of here. Um, well, let me write this down. It's always a bummer not to have this. Uh, bytes for buff in A, um, then eight more bytes. This is the metadata from the heap. Uh, then next four bytes are B's, um, forward pointer, uh, then next four bytes 
bytes are b's uh, back bk pointer. Okay. Cool. All right. So we should be able to verify this by saying if we just pass in 16 bytes. So let's um, we'll do this in a different uh, window here. We can run unlinked and we can do uh, like doing a good old fashioned IPython and then print a times 16. So this can make sure that I'm copying, you know, exactly how many bytes I think I am and that should not crash it at all. Um, but now that I have that and then the next bytes are going to be one, two, three, four. This is going to be the forward pointer that will then crash it, the program. And if I go try that, input on in GDB, we can see that it's going to crash by accessing that. So, um, and it may be because I overwrote the zero pointer, but let's see. Um, all right, rerun. Oh, uh, it's got it. Okay. So it's stopped. Oh, it's because of the breakpoint. Now it's stopped because of the seg fault. And we can see that. EAX is 62, 62, 62, 62, the four Bs that we had. So it's trying to overwrite um, 62, 62, 62, 62 plus four with EDX and EDX is actually 0804B4. So if we redo this one more time and go back here, we have this be so basically the BBBB is what we're going to overwrite and then CCCC is going to be, um, well, as we'll see in a second. So continue this seg fault. So at the same place. So here at EAX, I'm trying to write at 62, 62, 62, 62 plus four. I'm trying to write EDX, which is actually my forward pointer, 63, 63, 63, 63. Okay, whew. so what am I doing now? Now I am, I basically have a, whatever I put in for my A's here, sorry, my four A's, I should have done something different. Uh, whatever I put in for my four A's there, that's the address that is going to get um, overflowed. And then my four B's here, this is going to be what I'm going to write. Um, the tricky part that you do have to watch out with this is that the unlinking is going to happen both ways. So you're going to be overriding various offsets of these forward and backward pointers. So uh, you do have to be, you ha we'll have to be careful about that. And we'll have to see kind of how this goes. Um, but let's just dive right in and see if we can do it. So now that we know how we can overwrite, because we already have input then to overwrite, um, the question is, what do we want to overwrite? So we already know we have this beautiful unlink function that's already created uh, this, sorry, the shell function that's already created for us. So if we can get somebody to jump to this awesome 080484EB, then that would be great. Um, the question is, okay, so then the idea is where do we, what do we overwrite? Um, so this is our target. Is this All right? Okay. So I've been thinking for a bit and I realized it is going to cause a problem in the fact that we are. So basically what I want to do is overwrite something either so because I know this pointer on the stack, I can completely break the layout of the stack and know exactly where save DIP for main is. So we can get it um, to jump there. We could also calculate the save DIP of unlink. Um, the core problem though, is that uh, the value that I want to write is this 0804 84 EB, this is going to be not writable memory because it's going to be in the text segment. So uh, if we look at info, restart. 
restart. Info mem. Ah, I don't remember how to do it. Okay, so um, the, well, we can just go and there we go. Read. All right. So the text segment is 0804.83.F0, uh, 282.84.EB. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely within there. So, um, and that's where we want to go. So if, we'll tr if we try writing that, so actually, I mean, we can demonstrate that this is uh, not going to work properly if we, Let's see, how do I want to do this? GDB run, oh, there we go. The input to that. Um, let's see, standard input. I can't remember how to do it. The results from a file, I think it's like this. Okay, that's not it. Um, well, I'll just do it really quickly. Okay, so Python, let's see. So we want to print a times times eight plus uh, b times eight plus. So let's say I just wanted to like, I don't know, overwrite this. So uh, slash X E B slash X 84 slash X 04 slash X 08 times two, because I want two of these. Okay. So now when I run that and go output, run, so continue, continue, and we can see that I got a seg fault because I'm trying to overwrite at EAX OX4, which is this memory address. So even if, let's say, what I want to do so if we look at unlink, I mean, there's a, a lot of targets that I can do. I can overwrite the, um, I can overwrite <coughs> the, let's say Finney at, uh, Register where actually is that? Is it at 0804 8674? Hmm. Um, but the problem is, even if I do that, I thought these are just the symbol table sim tab contains 75 entries. Um, yeah, so for instance, okay, interesting. These are all the symbols. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, so the Finney is the list of all of the functions that should be executed after the program terminates. Um, I believe it's used by libc and so what we could do, basically, if we can write to the Finney and write out this shell uh, function call, it will start executing there. But the problem is it's a two-way write. So the thing that we overwrite, we're going to have to be okay with writing um, to it. So that's where I'm kind of stuck right now in figuring out where I actually want. So Finney... No, because this is not writable, but the Finney array is writable. 
So for instance, uh, see dynamic data. Uh, it's writable but not exploitable. So like I could make it do this, right? So this is the Finney array. So I should be able to write to those addresses. So I should be able to write to 08049F. 9F0C. Um, I did get a seg fault. Okay, cool. And why is that? Continue, continue, seg fault. So EAX is this value. Why does that not work? Do the AX and C plus four. Can I not examine this? What's going on? Yeah, so why can't I write to that? Uh, oh, eight, oh, four, eighty four, a zero. Hopper, where's my hopper? All right, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, I know this. I know it's crashing here. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. I should just be able to set this. Maybe not. I can't remember how to do that with debugging. Breakpoint, breakpoint, seg fault. Okay. EDX is that same value, I know, because I put it in there. And I get a seg fault when trying to move that into EAX plus four. Hmm. I mean, I can examine that. But why can't I? Map, how do I? Ah, uh, yes, the great Google has all the answers. Um, GDB, how? Okay, so I need to figure out why that's not working. The other thing I need to do is to figure out, okay, so that, there we go. That show mem. Info proc mappings, that's what I want. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, okay. So I have, where's my pointer at? My pointer's at 08049F0C, 08049F, but it doesn't have the permissions. Maintenance info sections. Okay, cool. That's nice. Um, 0804 
9F, 0C, 08, 04, 9F, 0C. Yeah, alloc, load data has contents to F10. Like, why would that? Alloc load data has contents. Hmm. I don't understand it, but let's. And we can do C minus four. Calculator C minus four. Eight. So we can do. O eight plus you know, X O eight zero X oh no I want O C zero X nine F zero X O four zero X O eight All right, restart, continue, continue, seg fault. Now moving EDX, which is 08049FOC into, so now I did bypass uh, that other line into uh, EAX plus four. Why does that fail? This doesn't make any sense. But this one did work. Or no, is this on the same line? Dereference EAX plus f take EDX. Yeah, O eight, O four, eighty four, A zero. Why? Got to get to the bottom of this. Okay, breakpoint one, two, should be breakpoint three. All right. So now EDX should be this. So we want to move that value into EAX. So this is EAX. So uh, examine 20X plus four. which is that thing exactly. And set value. Okay. Not above Googling folks. Got to, there we go, cool. Oh, nice. Set int C D X pang. Four nineteen. Okay. Six seven, huh? Sag fault. Into EAX plus four. Wow. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. Let's see. Okay, now. I guess the question is, is this my version of what's going on? Or maybe there's something else on the real machine that would be different in a good way. So let's make a directory tab atom D. Uh, tab 
10. Add him to the, uh, 10. Add him to unlink. Home, unlink, unlink, pass. Of course. Okay. All right, let's GDB this. out p 20 i dot sign eip of course i want to examine <clears throat> yeah i mean move edx into eax plus four dereference oh man okay well, that is what I wanted to target. Apparently, I can't write to that. I'm not sure why. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Um, okay, so I'm going to pause it and do some digging. Okay, I'm back. So as much fun as I know it is to sit there watching me thinking off into the distance, which I had to do for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and do a bunch of reading to figure out what I was missing here um, and trying some experiments out. So one thing you can see maybe here that I just tried out was because um, I was thinking the key problem is I can over. So I know the location of the stack and the location of the heap, but I can over with this unlink function, I can overwrite something. But um, the thing that I overwrite that with has to be writable the other way, too, which is the thing that makes this so difficult is that um, we can't just overwrite, let's say, the um, Finney array with the address of shell because we can't write to the address of cell plus four because the address of cell is in the dot text segment. Um, I was floating around trying to experiment with other ideas like what if I, because I do have a stack pointer leaked, or I do have a stack pointer leaked on the stack, so I know the location of everything on the stack. So I thought, well, maybe what if I change the um, saved EIP on the stack to then go to my shell code because I, um, sorry, to go to my buffer that's on the heap because I do could put shell code on there. But of course, as I know, already knew from looking at the permissions there, the heap is not executable. So um, the fact that this is not a non-X uh, stack does make this uh, a little bit more difficult, which also uh, makes it more interesting. But I've come up with a new hypothesis that I'm going to try out, and I think this is promising. So I'm, that's why I decided to turn on the cameras. So basically, the idea is I thought, well, what are the other things I could overwrite with the stack? And I know that I'm in here in this unlink function, and I know that right below the stack pointer, so there's the saved EIP on the stack. We know there's the saved base pointer for the previous function frame, previous functions frame which means that this unlink function, if I create that, um, if I overwrite the saved base pointer and unlink, when unlink calls leave, the leave instruction, it will set up the base pointer for main to point wherever I want. And since I know what's in the stack and what's on the heap, that I will be able to essentially change the stack, so the base pointer of the stack, to be in, um, on the heap, which I control, which means I can put the return address of main, basically essentially create a whole new function frame for main and have that base pointer be, um, have the saved EIP of that frame be on shell. So this is gonna be pretty complicated, uh, but it's actually pretty exciting. 
Um, so let's start writing the exploit. So this was just an idea I just had two minutes ago before I started recording. Um, and so I thought it'd be good to um, start trying that. So, okay, good. So process. Uh, 24. Oh, no. What I can't remember what all these arguments are about. I think that's just what I want is to do that. And so I want to start executing this. And I want to extract the stack address and this heap address from my connection. And then I can't remember, I'm gonna have to look up Pwn Tools. Pwn Tools. Um, and see where the, how to capture values. Yeah, documentation, so the docs here are pretty good as we know. We've gone through them a whole times. Um, Receive, I think uh, yeah, tubes. There we go, and then um, let's see. Receive the return when a regex matches the string in the buffer. I think that's what I want. Is receive regex. Um, oh, that's weird. This highlighting is done by here, which is super annoying. So, um, okay, so we have receive. Wait, why is that not? Oh, because of course, why would it have an underscore? Receive until the delimiter is found, and will it return? Uh, receive until so where receive repeat receive regex yeah okay all right it's been too long since I did the last one of these so I don't know exactly what's going on but I think I just should be able to do a through F uh, zero through nine and plus um, now I need a heap line this here is heap address leak Okay, now receive that until now that you got leak sketch shell. Cool. Okay, so then we're going to extract from this stack link and the heap link um, I need uh, re dot match. Let's see. There's my IPython um, import re re dot match. All right, apply the pattern to start of the train returning a match object. Okay, and the pattern I want is maybe I want find. No, okay, here is on. And let's do that on, we already have an execution of this. We can go here, we go here, we can call this stack link and assume that that's what this is gonna return. Well, I guess technically that I think should have the new line. And then we go back and we copy this in just to see uh, what this object looks like. So it's a match object and I don't remember how to interact with that, but I have this nice help function which write group match 
should be group zero, wait, group one. Hmm. Why did that? Had that match just four? Oh, because I need that inside. Yeah. There we go. All right. See, this is why you test things as you develop them. And of course, I guess I don't need that in here, but I'm going to fix it for this guy as well. All right. Match.group1. And then I think we should be able to say int this 16 to say interpret this number as base 16 number. Uh, so stack leak is going to be int this 16. And of course, I don't care about what happens if there's not a group or whatever because. Who cares? I'm just trying to get this leak uh, just for this. So this one uh, match. And similar thing here. And since uh, since I already did this, uh, heap leak equals int group one 16. So now I can do print hex uh, stack leak x heap leak and I should be able to all right ba, ba, ba. oh good and I didn't do my connection dot interactive okay Um, I didn't get. Oh, uh, oh, 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 because I didn't do regex receive. That helps if you use receive regex, the right functions. Again, this is why you develop things piecemeal because you make tiny mistakes. And. Okay. Here is oh. I see. I mean, I see the problem is that the problem on both cases is I don't have anything. I mean, I can specify, I guess, exactly how many characters I expect rather than just a plus, but um, so the problem was that regex was matching on not all of the input. Ah, there we go. Okay, great. So now I'm parsing in both of them. Here's the stack address, here's the heap address, and now you got leak get shell. Cool. Okay, so then I, oh, and I also want to verify that's the number, that's the number, that's the number, that's the number, but I've got these all in integers now, so I can do integer arithmetic on them. Great. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to fire this up in GDB, and I want to figure out for this value that it prints out of the stack leak, what's the offset from that? And we actually know what that value is because we have the C code. So we can see that this uh, value that it prints out is A. And what we want to know is what's the difference between A, which is the location of A on the stack, and the thing that we want to overwrite, the um, saved EBP. So, um, and we actually do know what we want to send because we've been uh, messing with that in the scratch buffer. So basically, I'm going to make my payload. I'm going to have eight 
A's for filling up the buffer of A. And I'm gonna say that I want uh, eight more B's. And then P plus equals, this is gonna be um, uh, C, D, E, F. This is gonna be the four bytes for B's forward pointer. And then P plus equal to uh, F, G, H, I, J. This is gonna be the four bytes that are BK's pointer and then any other, so this will be then hopefully our ROP payload. So the idea will be I'll add this all up and I'll make it so that the ROP payload is the um, P's next thing. And we will do con.send P. And make sure that's what I did in the other one. Yep, okay. Cool. Oh, and then we'll need to append a new line to P P plus equal because we know that gets will keep going until it gets a new line. Cool. All right, so it got a seg ball. Good, that's what I wanted. Okay. So the question is when I execute this, uh, let's restart this. I think it's with me having nothing in there. So I want to continue. Okay, good. So this is my stack address leak. This is exactly what a scratch buffer is for. This is my stack address leak, where that's what it gives me. And now I'm in the unlink function. So if I do x20 x dollar sign ESP, so look at the stack with the stack save stack pointer. So I know I actually just, so I missed the prologue uh, being executed here. The push EBP, move the stack pointer to ES, EBP, move the stack pointer down uh, 16. So it's gonna be, uh, so this should be the saved EIP on the stack, 080485F7, which should be X5I. Um, we can look at that real quick, and we can see that this is the end of main, and I think if we go back into Hopper, we should see that at that location in main, which was, what did I say it was? Um, 080485 F7, 85 F7. This is right after the call to unlink. So that means on the stack, this is the saved stack pointer, the saved, um, um, what am I talking about? The saved instruction pointer, uh, where we're gonna go. But this is what I wanna overwrite. This is this FF, FF, D208. This value here is actually the, um, base pointer of the the mains EBP. So whatever we overwrite here, this will actually get used as the base pointer for main. So when main calls leave and return, we can actually completely control where it goes to. Awesome. This is a very cool challenge. Um, I always like when they, so, but the question is we need to figure out that address. So the stack leak is there the saved EBP that we want to overwrite is here. And so we need to calculate the difference between them. Uh, let's see if this guy will do it. I don't know if it'll do hex math. Or I guess we could use something like, oh, all right, three, Python. 28, so 28, um, so, Saved EBP is equal to stack leak plus 28. Is that correct? Uh, no, it's going to be minus uh, 28. So at the stack leak minus 28, that's going to be the saved EBP that I want to overwrite. And we can kind of simulate what we want to have happen here because we don't have any kind of um, overwrite here. But basically, if I want to change let's say that value, and what is it printing out in unlink.c? It's printing out, uh, the leak we're getting is the heap address of A, the very first one. So we have A plus 24 is B, um, and plus, well, going back to our picture, we actually have this. So A is here, plus 24 is gonna get us here, uh, plus four, plus four, so plus eight. So that is gonna be the address we're gonna want to jump to. So this is going to be, um, uh, 
so this is going to be so saved EVP is there um, target on um, heap is going to be the heap leak let's see I think it should be plus but let's how can we test this oh we know the address that it popped out and then we know if this is the stack pointer uh, then this is going to be the uh, pointer B so we can see this is B and the thing that it printed out should be when we go up to the top um, let's see B is here A is A is there so yes we're gonna have to add on to that so plus so the heap leak is a so it's gonna be a plus 24 to get us to B uh, plus 24 plus another 8 offset when that would then be um, we may have to do it more Actually, we will definitely need to do it more because of the way the EVP works. Yeah, so this will be, um, we need to be four, eight gets us off here, then plus um, another four for saved um, EIP that we want to then can control, and then another four with the saved base pointer. So that, what we want to do, let's see, is we want to, um, I think what we're gonna do is let's so we want this calculation here and I think we want P to be the saved EBP and then target on heap and then this is going to be mains new um, mains new saved uh, E IP and then mains new saved EBP, which is something that's not used. And so here we can say our target that we want to get to is, I think it's P32 is the way to do this. Um, zero X, and this goes back all the way. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to execute this target. Yes, the shell command. And that should work there. And then mains new save DBP, we can do CCCC. And now, I don't think this is just gonna work off the bat. That would be insane if it did, but you know, I mean, there's some times where you just wanna see what happens. So um, for, there we go. Cannot concatenate string and in int objects. Ah, because we need P32. For each of these, P32. All right, well, something happened. Um, <laughs> now we'll need to debug exactly what happened and exactly, uh, you know, how we went, um, how we went wrong here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember how did I use pwn tools and debug pwn tools and there's a really great way to actually use pwn tools with your input that you're giving it and debug it at the same time which is awesome uh, pwn tools gdb um waiting for pwn i can't remember exactly which one of these things does what you want but attach, I think, is just what you want. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. And you get to specify um, the mode that you want. But so I think we could just do this. Uh, GDB. Yeah, so GDB dot attach to the connection and just continue i think this well let's see oh that's right and it knows that i'm using tmux so it's it's knowing that that's what i want to do and so 
Um, although the problem is I don't know how to switch between uh, up and down, it looks like. Okay. Uh, reason stopped. So, okay. All right, that's useless. Okay, so we want to break at, we know what memory address we want to break at. I'm sorry for that. Um, we want to break at, I mean, this is where we normally crash. So we want to see what happens here. And break at star zero X and continue. Okay. Backtrace. Interesting. It's stopping at. Do we have our new line in there anywhere? Oh. P plus equals new line, of course. Or I can use the handy dandy send line, which will send a new line. Um, and I'm. I may not need this breakpoint. Let's see. Okay, kill that. That kills that. That kills that. Go here. Okay, great. Ah, sig fault. Sig fault. In libc start main. Okay, interesting. Uh, so something happened. I definitely overwrote some stuff. Let's figure out what we overwrote. Um, so now I do want to add back in my breakpoint, and then I'm going to kill this. And pop it up again. And so now I'm I'm so now I can walk through and see exactly if my payload is what I want. So um, and I don't have all my screen because I've split this Tmux terminal into two. Uh, so I need to do info registers to find out what's going on. And we know that it's going to and we can look at the hopper code here too. So we can know that Okay, what's going on here? So EBP into EAX plus four, right? So EBP is um, EBP is FF eight one six four zero eight. So if we go and examine that X twenty X, let's see minus eight. So this should be um, the address we want. Uh, I guess I should have, oh, FF, oh, okay, so this EDX must be our, um, the value that we, ah, yes, yes, so we know that that is uh, FF8160408 uh, here now is our, our stack address that we want to overwrite, so this is doing the one-way overwrite, so then what we're doing here is then overwriting the, um, and what are we going to overwrite EAX, which is FF eight one six four zero eight with EDX. Wait, wait. Okay, so I had that backwards. So EDX is nine FD eight four three eight. This is going to be. That should be this location into the heap, if we did our math correctly. It should be here, I believe. Um, and so ECX, let's think. Um, okay, so EAX, okay, so this is going to, uh, ba -ba -ba. okay, so this is going to overwrite this plus four, which is of course going to be the saved EIP. Okay, so the way this is going to work is it's going to overwrite that, which will work with EDX, but then it should crash when we return there because there's no way we could do that. But let's see, walk through what happens. Okay, and then we're going to move EAX into EBP minus four. Um, Okay, and then we're gonna move EBP minus eight into EDX. And now this is where we get to write whatever we want, wherever we want. So now into EAX, which should be um, into EAX, which is 9FD8438. Okay, I definitely wanna swap the pointers then. That's um, what this is making clear to me. 
is I want to, uh, and I could have kind of figured out, you know, exactly where I wanted the things to be, but hey, whatever. Uh, so let's do that. Obviously that didn't work. Let's do this again. And then now the first thing that I'll overwrite will be the target on the heap plus four, um, which shouldn't have any effect. Uh, it is the, yeah, that shouldn't have any effect. And then here I should be overwriting EAX, which is my value on the stack of the base pointer of main with EDX, this value on the stack. And so let's do a next instruction. So we have a no op, we have a leave. So this will then set up and should, um, you know, uh, should put my value 08 F three B four three eight into um, EBP, the base pointer. So do that. And then the base pointer is now eight F three B four three eight. And now we return, which is going to return back to where we were in main. So this is fine. But now what's happening is now we are, um, we've essentially, um, even though the current stack pointer is in, is on the stack where it was, the base pointer is now pointing into our memory. Um, it should be pointing right here into our memory. Um, so we'll see, we're going to add uh, 10 to the stack pointer, move zero into EAX. So this is in the prolog we're going to move the base pointer minus four into ECX, which is fine. Now we're going to do a leave where a leave instruction, it's important to remember this, um, a leave instruction is going to do the opposite of the last two instructions of the prolog. So a leave instruction is basically a um, set this, um, I think it's, it's essentially a move the stack pointer in, or move the base pointer into the stack pointer. So basically reset the stack to wherever it currently was. And because we currently control the value of the stack pointer, um, this will then cause the stack pointer to point to where we want it to. And so we do next instruction. And then let's look at this. Why does main have this weird this and then this load effective address into ESP. Oh, interesting. So now we should have controlled the stack pointer, but now it's going to load ECX minus four into the ESP. Uh, what's ECX? That's weird. Okay. Um, wonder why it does that. Let's see, ECX 43, 43, 43, 43. <laughs> okay, well, at least that's a value that I control. Oh, because it put the value that we had after that on there. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so it's going to then change the stack pointer now to point to something garbage, and it's going to try to return from there. Um, so for some reason, and I'm not 100% sure why, is you have this weird um, instructions here at the end of main. So what we really want to do is we want to change. So the CCCC, that would be 43, is that right? Um, C is 43, yep. So we want this to be the same um, target on the heap, I believe because it, for whatever reason, sets that up and then calls a return. So now we should, now we're getting much closer. Um, there we go, kill that. Okay, yes, you got into file. Let's do it again. Next, 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 next. Step through, not leave, return. Add this, do this, do this, do a leave, and then load back that address into there and now do a return. But the question is, where am I returning to? So X uh, 20 X dollar sign ESP. So the stack pointer um, 
So now I'm at this address. So what's that stack pointer minus four? Okay, so I'm four off. I need to do basically let's say minus four here. Um, I wonder if that's extra stuff they added to make it easier. I'm not sure. Okay, next instructions. Good, good, good. Leave ret and now. Boom, executing bin bash. So now, of course, the key question is, does this actually work with what we want it to work? <laughs> so um, I'm gonna do a poor man's copy and I'm going to comment out my debug code. And then I'm going to do a cat there into exploit. Boom. Python exploit.py home unlink unlink. Oh yeah, all right. So I can do ID, show me I'm unlink pwn. I can do lsla home unlink or unlink. I can do cat home unlink flag. Conditional write what, where, from unlink exploit. Oof, man, that was a tough one. Um, there's no way I'm still authenticated. <laughs> yeah, because they like to time out. Um, the server unexpectedly dropped the connection. I can't believe that failed. Log in. Log in okay, that's what I was hoping for. All right, get that unlink. And now I've got to satisfy my own curiosity and see what that intended. All right, let's see, what do they do? From arch process, receive until shell. Yeah, get that, get that, get the shell. Pack, the payload is shell, what's shell? Oh, that's the address, heat plus eight, new return address. Yeah, okay, that ret. Yeah, they basically did what we wanted it to do, so. Um, yeah, we did find the expected solution there. So awesome. All right. Well, there we go. We got to the end of toddlers battles and that last one was a little bit tricky, but learned a lot in the process. I hope you did too. And next week we'll be back looking at rookies. So thanks. Take care.